Why? That's so why? Funny. What's with the hair? Are we growing <sighs> low season? I can't. Are, like you just got home. Hockey's over. Buzzed. I mean, we always laughed at like Mark turned the page. I was like, man, if you got it, let it grow. In, oh. Honestly, agree. <laughs> if you got it, hair is a privilege. <laughs> Take right. use of it. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of On the Porch with Front Porch Music, hosted by me, Jenna. And me, Logan. This week, we had Mark Leland on the porch with us. No stranger to uh, competitions, really. That's true. He's a professional hockey player over in Germany. Kind of took the stage first with uh, The Voice Germany. Yeah, kind of a huge national stage. Yep, we dive right in. That's all. We don't take baby steps. We dive right in. We do. It was a great conversation with Mark. Uh... He didn't have his tooth in as um, usual for his signature gap tooth look. <laughs> <laughs> so here's our chat with Mark. You didn't say anything. <laughs> we talked about boots and hearts. We talked about top of the country contest, which he's also part of. We talked about his new music and how he broke it onto the country music scene via TikTok. And what growing up with four sisters is like. Here's our chat with Mark Ledlin. We are on the porch with Mark Ledlin. He had the decency to put his tooth in for us today. Oh, just kidding. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> are you making this your signature? What's going on? You know what? Just as long as I play hockey, it's not worth it for me to put my tooth back in or like get it fixed because the chances of me getting it knocked out again are way too high. And I don't want to like, you know, what? one tooth missing is enough, but with hockey, like you never know. I could come back in a summer and have my front four teeth missing. <laughs> I think it's a like it, it it's like a decent signature. It's set to you apart. It's it's so left field that it almost works for me. And if anybody knows me, then like left field is known to be the place to be. <laughs> can, can you like whistle through it? <laughs> no, but when I put my tooth in, you can hear like I can't sing with my tooth. And I was literally just talking to a friend of mine. I was like, man, like could you imagine you're on stage and you're like making good eye contact with a girl, and all of a sudden you sing a word and it falls in her drink? You're like, ooh. <laughs> That might not be the play. Might not. <laughs> I, I feel like no. I feel like last summer at the at Boots and Hearts at the Emerging Artist Showcase, I feel like you started your set with the tooth in, and then I feel like you ripped it out at some point. Like I can't. <laughs> you know what? I just like going into it. I was like, I might as well try to put the best performance on I can. So I'm just not going to have it in for whatever reason. I love it. <laughs> I think I bugged you all the time. Take your tooth out and make a TikTok. Put your tooth in and go sing a song. Like, what do you want? <laughs> what well, it's, it's so funny. Anytime I tease a song on TikTok or make a video with the tooth in, all the comments are like tooth, and it's like <laughs> it's like people notice. And like, I mean, for me, I don't notice anymore. Like having the gap in my teeth, but I think visually, people be like, "Oh my god, something changed!" Like something changed. Like most people see, like, "Oh, his hair got longer. My hair is ridiculously long now." And, uh, but no, it's always a tooth. Where do you play hockey again? Uh, in Germany. Right. Well, so welcome. I've been over there, huh. been over there for the last eight years and it's getting like, I've been over there more of my adult life than yeah. I've been back home in Canada. Mm -hmm. So I'm basically just a visitor here at this point. How, how's your German? <laughs> German's perfect. I grew up speaking both languages. Oh, well, perfect. Then. So when I went to school, like all of my electives were in German, my history classes were in German. And uh, I actually got in trouble because I spoke fluent German and like you have to take beginner German as your elective. And so my teacher was just like, mm, something's off right now. <laughs> because like when most people learn a new language, they speak with a Canadian accent and like my accent's non-existent for German. And so she's like, we need to talk. And I was like, ooh, this is a bad start four minutes into the class. And uh, so she was like, yeah, like the only way you can stay in this class is if you're my TA. So I was like, perfect. I can grade everyone's assignments plus my own. Sweet. So it worked out worked out for the best part. It's weird that they wouldn't have like given you an exemption or you something. You have lucky girl syndrome. Well, I did grow up in a house with four sisters, so I mean it's just bound to happen. <laughs> okay. Um <laughs> What is it like growing up with four sisters? Do you know how to dress yourself proper? My brother Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, my brothers are like we get made fun of because we know how to match our one our clothes and wear a belt and wear a watch and our friends make fun of us but they're the ones who can't get girls because they look stupid and i'm like you're welcome <laughs> no that was never the issue like 
being around my sister so much, like it wasn't even a verbal thing anymore. I'd walk down the stairs and see a look. I was like, well, I have to change. So, <laughs> Ick. Yeah. I'm just, that's funny. That's funny. What did you learn? What was the, what did you learn most from growing up with four sisters? How to treat a girl or how to talk to a girl in a sense. Like, I think we always say like, especially in the hockey room, like Ugh. if you're, I know, I know. <laughs> Um, Oops. <laughs> but it's always like, man, like there's so many good looking guys that play hockey, like not including myself. And, but if you can make a girl laugh, you've done 90% of the battle because most times when you go on a date or something like that, and you just have to sit through like a boring conversation, like, listen, like a freshly painted wall is nice to look at, <laughs> <laughs> but it only goes so far. Uh that's amazing you're so funny <laughs> you are so funny so was this your last trip i'm all over the place here was this your last trip back from germany for hockey season it's really hard to say because obviously like to get into the music side of it like i'm coming out with an ep june 30th and um that body of work like i want to release it independently and I kind of want to use that for a resume to be like, hey, like, this is what I can do. This is who I am. And this is a body of work I'm proud of. And if it comes to the point where somebody takes notice and says, wow, this is like good stuff, then cool. Like, I have no problem pursuing music full time. And like, but I want to make sure that, you know, because obviously music is a money intensive job. And like, I don't want to be busting tables at a restaurant my entire life while trying to pursue music. And so like, I've saved up a good chunk of money to do all this stuff independently. And like I'm going to do it hundred percent, but if the time comes where the money is so good to go back, like me being 25, there's nothing stopping me from going one more year and making a good chunk of change. And then when I have 17 songs that I'm sitting on outside of the EP, I'm not worried about it. And I'm always kind of betting on myself and that's always how I've been. Mm -hmm. And you have been recording, I'm assuming you've been recording demo vocals and stuff over in Germany anyways, this whole time, right? Like you're not it's not like you're doing, it's not like when you leave the country music stops. No. So I'm in like a weird spot where I don't really have a, like a vocal setup with me in Germany. Um, I send my producers voice notes of what the song is like fully done. And then they basically build the instrumental around that and use my voice don't demo um, to kind of do the lyric vocal, like the, the vocal pattern. And then when I come home, I track all the vocals. So everything, everything I send out to whoever it is in the industry, like they have a full production behind it, but it's just a voice note demo. And I feel, and I feel like if you can listen to a song fully produced with a voice note demo and still get that same feeling of what the idea is going to be, you've done the right thing. Definitely. How did you get connected with your producers? I was just like so happy. I had a friend of mine who was doing music and like I was looking for producers at the time because I wanted to do a country song. And so I just so happened to like find these guys on Instagram and I was like, Hey, like, are you guys in Vancouver? Like, I know so-and-so uses you. And they were like, yeah, man, come on in. And like, so we met up for the first time we caught a vibe and it kind of was just up from there. We did drink about me, drink with my friends, girl like you. And like all those songs did really well. And, uh, I'm super happy with the stuff they're doing right now. So like for the next foreseeable future, like I plan on doing everything with them. And you brought Danny Garrett to Boots and Hearts with you. I did. I did. They, they become some of my closest friends outside of music as well. Like I see them tw two, three times a week, even with their busy schedule. And like, they're going to be in my band for um, Sunfest. They're going to be in my band for all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. And with Top of the Country right now, like I plan on having them around as long as I can while I play live. Are you excited for Top of the Country? I'm pumped for it. It's so different than like, anything I've ever done. And like, I kind of got a taste of like, Oh, like maybe I could like boots and hearts was the first time I was like, yeah, like maybe I could do this full time. People seem to like the music. And then with top of the country taking notice, I was like, yeah, like let's really give this a shot. It's not your first contest though, either. eh? No, this isn't the first contest anymore. Um, with boots and hearts, like speaking of boots and hearts, you obviously weren't the ultimate winner, but you were one of the breakout names for people to, to be talking about for, from that showcase last year. Like our, when, when you took over our Instagram and did the hot girl walk, um, <laughs> it was one of our most like engaged uh, takeovers. And it was like, like we had lots of DMS coming in about who you were. And even at boots and hearts, people were super like 
stoked to see you on stage and you were everywhere that weekend just like making connections getting in front of people and people were were really excited to hear from you it was just really really wild to kind of watch it was i mean like my dad always says like i can sell a house to a house (laughs) <laughs> and like, or like I can make a brick wall laugh. And like, for me, networking is just like part of my DNA and like talking to people because I like to hear everyone's stories, like where they're from, what they do. And I think for the most part, like as an artist, if you're not engaging like that, I don't want to say you're boring, but like, if you know an artist is going to come out, like after my set, I wanted to make sure I was in the crowd, like drinking with people, networking and like saying hi. And like, because at the end of the day, like growing up in hockey, People who come watch the games pay your salary mm-hmm. and people who listen to your music are the ones who are paying your salary mm-hmm. via streaming. And so for me, like that's a no brainer when I, when I play a show, like they're paying their hard earned money to come see me live. The least I can do is some, have some sort of personality out there to be like, Oh, like I would see that guy again. Maybe he wasn't as good as so-and-so, but man, was he funny on stage and man, was he personable? I remember watching your sound check nobody else got to sound check one person got to sound check just to test and that was it i was standing at the back because i wasn't intending to watch but i was walking by and then you started playing and i was like oh fuck <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty good <laughs> i think i think coming from like an athlete's perspective i think people thought i wasn't gonna sound great i hate to say because i knew you were like I watched your TikTok. That's how I found you was on fucking TikTok. Yeah. But so I was like, you, I knew you didn't suck, but I was like, you've never performed on a stage before. I like believed in you on the inside, but on my exterior, I was like, don't fuck this up. Don't fuck this up. Don't fuck this That's up. how I felt too. <laughs> and people were singing with you immediately. And like, why well, open up with Drink About Me, which was like the first song that kind of started it all. And just to hear like the people knowing the words and singing it back to me was a feeling like I'll never forget. I was standing side stage shocked. I was like, there, they know these people came here to see you today. <laughs> this is insane. And that was the crazy part. Like Dan and Garrett had mentioned before, like, man, like you want to go first. You want to set the bar. And I've never been shy of like being the first one to do anything. And so luck of the draw, like when we were doing the draws, Jenna, you picked me to go first. And I was like, you know what? I guess, I guess luck's on my side today. And Not being a shy person, I was so comfortable doing it acoustically with Dan and Garrett up there because they've done music their entire life. They've done their own tours. And I knew I had those guys like on my side. And the second when I started playing the riff and like had people singing a drink about me, I was like, all right, it's time to dial it in and like do the best I can. And not to mention, it's like also on one of the biggest stages in Canada. Like, Oh, massive. Yeah. You came off the stage and you were like (laughs) shaken. (laughs) Dude, it was, it was almost one of those moments where you're like, did that really just happen? Like, because, you know, most, most people don't really associate arts and athletics together. And uh, for me, like, there's always been this stigma that, like, hockey players are these meatheads missing teeth. Like, that still happens to be true. But, <laughs> yeah, just show us your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> but, you have, but you have that 1% who are confident enough to be like, listen, like, my whole story, like I grew up in a household with sisters. Like I obviously have an emotional side and like hockey's a pretty intensive sport where if you don't play well, you're going to hear about it. And for me, I was like, I want to make sure people know that arts and athletics can be intertwined. Like when I go home and have a bad day at the rink, like most guys just go home and play video games or just do nothing, stay with their phone. I go home and I write a song. I go home and play music. Like for me, it was always an outlet and that's why I wanted people to know, like, you can do this. You can do this no problem if you're an athlete, if you're a student. You just have to be okay with people knowing that you're a little bit different. And, like, being different in today's age is such a good thing. Hmm. Where did music come from for you? Like, Well, obviously to pick up girls, Jenna. Next question. Wait, <laughs> you say that. I know. No, music came – music – my dad played guitar for – as long as I can remember, but like any kid growing up, you can't learn anything from your parents before you turn it as an adult. Exactly. And so I was like, man, like I'm not going to learn guitar. So I played drums. It was something different than he did. And then when I was like at a point in my hockey career where I was just coming home and just beating a pillow to death, like just so frustrated with my performance, 
I was like, man, I got to find some way to like take this out and make it a positive. And so for me, like I went and bought a kid's guitar at a dollar store for like 30 bucks <laughs> and like what a piece of junk it was. But if I didn't buy that guitar, I wouldn't be where I am today. Hmm. And that was, you picked up, you started playing guitar in Germany, right? You got Yeah, when I was 19. There. Did you get stuck there during the pandemic too, though? No, no. So the pandemic, like everything happened in China and then our season got canceled. And then I flew out immediately. So I did all the, the COVID stuff in Canada. Gotcha. Yeah. When does the voice come in? I forget. The voice came in that year, actually. So just and so, back so people can follow along at home. <laughs> I'm clearly all over the place here. So you were uh, t- took part in uh, the competition series, The Voice Germany, right? Yes. Yeah. And so that kind of happened. Um, I did. I did this guy. So usually when you retire and you play for a team a long time, they do like a farewell game. And they asked me, they said, we know you sing. Would you want to perform for the stadium? And I was like, man, I've never performed outside of my room. Like, but sure. And so like, I got to sing um, the first song I ever released, World Wants Us to Have Tonight. And then I did Country Road, Take Me Home. (laughs) And that was the first taste of like, that's a super popular song in Germany. And so when I started singing it, there was like 3,500 people in the crowd, (laughs) 3,500 people in the crowd singing along. And I was like, wow, this is a pretty cool feeling. Because like when you get drowned out by the crowd singing the song, it's a pretty cool feeling. So I said, you know what? Like to heck with it. I'm not going to tell anybody that I'm going to audition. Like I'm just going to do it myself. And like lo and behold, I was late for the first audition. And so they basically sit you in a room full of 75 people and you sing a cappella. And I had, it was like a kid in class. I had to sit right in front of the judges. I was the third one to go. And then you kind of just have to, you sing and they go, okay, thanks. Like, and then you have to wait for the other 72 people to perform. And so at the end of that, like I had no expectations. Like for me, I knew I was going to go back to a profession where I can make good money. I love doing what I do, but I really, I was going to kick myself if I didn't do it. Mm. And so lo and behold, like I made the first round auditions and then you proceed to play guitar in front of the other studio producers and stuff like that and then nine hours later i got through all the rounds and kind of that was like a moment where i was like man like let's let's keep pursuing this and then COVID happened and obviously i went back to canada to be with my family so i had reached out to them i said listen like whatever happens like i'm back in canada now i'm so sorry but i can't come into any in-person um auditions and they said don't worry we're gonna do everything with zoom on you and uh, so, like, lo and behold, two two interviews later, two more performances, and I got the okay to be on the blind auditions. Wow. You do a whole lot in one day. Yeah, like, I'm very busy. Like, I can't just sit still and do nothing. Um, that's just how I'm wired. And so if it's, if it's writing a song, I'm then trying to do something else throughout the day. Like, if it's working out, skating, like, I'll just pack my day completely full. And just have to make time for whatever else I want to do. So for, for back to the voice for a second. Like, what, was it like an open casting call? Or yeah, so twenty four thousand people across Germany audition and two hundred made it. And um, I think you know what I wasn't the best singer. Like I can confidently say, like not a lot of people have been eliminated from the voice twice in one season. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but no, it was like. For them, it was a different thing because I was the first professional athlete to ever be on the show. And so, like, I had a different story to it. And I was okay with being the black sheep. Most people come from cover bands. They've been singing all their life. Like, lo and behold, I picked up guitar a year before and started singing. And I said, to heck with it. Might as well do it. And um, got, got eliminated in the blind auditions, but then made it back in the comeback stage. And, like, it was a cool like circle moment where the first song I ever learned on guitar was fast car by Tracy Chapman. And then I got to sing that on the actual show in the comeback stage performance, which is a pretty cool feat in my part. So you're standing on a stage in front of four chairs facing the opposite direction. Yeah. Is that the weirdest thing? You know what? It was more comfortable for me because I don't sing in front of people all that often at the time. Fair. And so for people to not be looking at you, it was almost like comforting. And then when they didn't turn around, I was like, I wasn't defeated. I was proud because I got to that point, especially as like who I am as as, as an athlete. I got further than 23,800 other people did. That's a great way to look at it. 100%. Like if, you, if you're one of those people who's a glass half empty kind of folk, 
I just can't associate myself with you because mm. if you can't take the positives out of a great experience, what are you going to do when something even better comes along and you take it for granted? Mm. Who are the judges? Just a bunch of German people. Okay. My next question. Are you well known in Germany? For, for hockey. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the music kind of, the music kind of like helped me out quite a bit. And so like I had, I think I had that shows broadcasted to about 10 million people a week on TV. And I want to say the entire hockey community in Germany was watching and rooting for me. Cool. And so, like I said, like being the black sheep, like I was the first one to be like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do something different. And it ended up being really well. And it kind of opened up a lot of doors for, for me to pursue music, not just saying, oh, like business opportunities, but for the confidence for me to be like, yeah, you can do this. Not that I'm lacking confidence in any aspect, but <laughs> it, it was the ability to be like, yeah, like people actually enjoyed hearing me sing. Let, let's try to write some stuff and, and put some stuff out for the people. That's really cool. So uh, you're not famous in Germany, but people know you. I'm not famous, but people know who I am. Gotcha. I'm just yeah. equating. There's this woman I used to work with and she was Miss. She was in the Miss Universe competition and none of us knew that. We found out one day and she's just like super famous in Eastern Europe. And I started thinking, like, are you low-key famous in another life? So, no. All right? all sorts of all sorts of fame, and like, I'd rather when I'm in Germany, I'd rather be known for my hockey, and when I'm in Canada, I'd rather be known for my music. Like, I kind of live these two. I'm like a Hannah Montana, but a way better <laughs> athlete. <laughs> and uh, I heard Hannah Montana's pretty good on 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 the skates. On the uh, skates. I'm not worried if she was to go one on one, I'd absolutely destroy her. <laughs> Um, but no, I mean, she can have the music part. I'll take the hockey, but, uh, no, I like, it was, it was a cool, I've done some pretty cool stuff over the last couple of years and just seeing the doors that have opened for me musically wise, it's pretty exciting. I think it is too. When did you decide I'm going to throw my new song up on TikTok? I was in my car waiting for my sister to drop off my hockey gear. Did you forget? <laughs> and, and I was like, yeah, I left it at her place. Cause she had picked it up from the airport that week. Okay. And uh, I said, ah, like, I, I did this song, like, TikTok's never really blown up. I did some, like, funny comedy stuff on TikTok, and it blew up a little bit. But then I was like, man, like, I might as well, I have this song, like, it's free marketing. Why not do it? And then lo and behold, like, the first or second video I did it, like, did, like, 100,000 views. I was like, ooh, this is kind of cool. Well, that's when you came onto our radar. Like, we, yeah. Like, I forget who sent it to who. It was me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but we're like... We gotta watch for this guy. <laughs> no, I just literally went to click the went to your. I was like, "Hey, this song is kind of cool." To Logan, clicked your little Instagram link in the TikTok, DM'd you, and was like, "Hey, we you want to do an interview?" And you're like, "This is cool." <laughs> and like, you know, people people who do music or like any sort of profession that involves like publicity, if you're too big to take any sort of meeting, like just the front door's right there. Don't let it hit you on the way out. Because you don't – in hockey, you can burn a bridge with a coach and he's going to come back in your career. If you're going to be a dick and not be nice to somebody that's wanting to help you out, then, like, go pound sand. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're 100% right. Yeah. I mean, like, it's – Never fresh out of any windows. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I think they just circle in my head until something new comes in and then I kind of beat that to the ground. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> But I think I think country music needs some some personality again. You know what I mean? Like I was watching a video of Alan Jackson where they told him you're playing the AC, AMCs or whatever, and they said, "Yeah, you got to play the backing track." So he got his drummer to play the set with no stick. I watched that. <laughs> I howled, and you know he's laughing the whole time. Like his face is so like conspicuous. Like I did something. <laughs> oh yeah. Have you seen and, it? No. Oh, it's so funny. He is like right on beat too the whole time, and there is nothing in his hands. That is so fun. It's like uh, when the Chili Peppers played at the Super Bowl. I forget who, who they guested for. Um, they didn't have their guitars plugged into anything and just blatantly weren't even trying. <laughs> like that, was like That was like a friend of mine, um, Alan Potker. He played in a band called These Kids Wear Crowns. And, um, oh, I remember that band. Yeah, and they did the same thing. They were playing the backing tracks, and so they all switched instruments. <laughs> and I think I think that's probably one of the funniest things because 
it's almost like a slap in the face to you as an artist that they don't have the confidence in you to put your best performance on. And I would 100%, if they were like, Mark, you have to play the backing tracks, I would go out there and I would have my band members line up and go sit down, not even play an instrument. Like, this is what's happening right now. Fair. I'm also not, a, I'm not opposed to controversy. And like any publicity is good publicity. <laughs> and uh, oh, it all goes back to I'm okay with being the black sheep. <laughs> I guess. I love it. Um. Okay, so TikTok, people love your TikTok. People love Drink About Me. Which I found my. I was like, oh, we're talking to Mark. And then I was walking around singing it in my fucking head. <laughs> hate you. <laughs> and then you put out Drinking With My Friends. And then you put out my fave. Girl Like You. Yeah. I On a very bad day I was having in September, I hadn't talked to this kid in like weeks. And then all of a sudden I, I just see my his name light up. And it's an audio recording. It's a mess. People a- know how to make you feel real good. <laughs> I was like, you just made my fucking day. You got that girl luck. Yeah. What? You got. No one luck. sends me these things. Mm. <sighs> but I know I'm like some some artists are weird. They're um they're very like private with gatekeepy. Yeah, like they don't want to show they don't want to show like their demos, and like. I think I might be a little bit too open in that aspect where Dan and Garrett go, Mark, the song's not really done yet. Please don't send it out. And I'm like, Ooh, I've already sent it to 11 people. <laughs> actually, I already put it on TikTok. <laughs> exactly. Actually, By the way, it just blew up. Let's keep going. Yeah. You played it at Boots and Hearts too, because I remember before you went out, you were like, I'm going to play this song you've never heard before and you're going to love it. And I was like, bet. And I think that was like, and then she loved it. And then she loved it. Yeah. And it was it was a cool song too because I wrote that with a good buddy Zach McPhee who's actually um, pursuing music as well, and um, he brought that idea to me. And I was like, "Oh, cool! Let's put some John Mayer lines in it." And uh, so we ended up finishing the song within like 15 minutes, and like all day I was playing it, and I played it for Danny Garrett, and they were like, "We have to play that at Boots. Like that is that has to be one of them." And so I was like, "Yeah, let's do it. Like let's close out with it." Because I wanted to make, like, a statement early on, like, play Drink About Me, like, my biggest song at the time. And, like, for me, everyone knew the words. And, like, I wanted to play an unreleased song that nobody really knew about. And so it just kind of worked out. And, like, everyone liked the song. And then everyone really liked the Drinking With My Friends roasting video. (laughs) And now I see people, like, doing the same thing. And I'm like, this is hilarious. I love to see people. Like, you have to make fun of yourself. Because if you Mm -hmm. can't make fun of yourself, how are you going to feel other people do? You you mean when other people do, right, Jenna? (laughs) Exactly. It's not not if, it's when. It's me making fun of you. Yeah, Jenna makes fun of everyone. Oh, But, like, that's – if you – it's one of these professions where you're going to meet all types of people and like not everyone's gonna like you they might not like your music but man they're gonna like my personality they're gonna like how i handle myself and like you got to give the people something to kind of hold on to that's true um so for top of the country that's coming up very soon i assume you're doing yours in vancouver yes are you doing a song that we've heard before or not i'm actually doing um i'm doing a really cool rendition of drink about me Kind of like what I did for Boots and Hearts, like the audition video. Mm-hmm. But um, it's going to be like full band, bass player, uh, drummer and everything. But it's going to be very Morgan Wallen, like one thing at a time studio session. Gotcha. Yeah. I actually don't gotcha because I've never listened to that before. But... Well, have you have you seen like the Dangerous Sessions that he used to do? All right. Well, I thought you work in country music. But I'm basically cool. what it is is like all the band members are in like a circle. <laughs> And uh, Morgan Wallen just sitting in the middle, and I was like, "Man, that's so personable because like you hear these songs through your headphones, but like as a visualizer, you want to see like the band doing it together." I kind of like that. And so I'm kind of taking another shot in the dark. Like it worked out with Boots, and like I made it with an acoustic video. Um, why not kind of see what Top of the Country thinks? And like, and I always think like if when I write a song, I make sure it's written on a guitar or a piano first. Because I mean, lugging around a grand piano isn't as easy. I've tried. It's doable, but not as easy. But not easy. But if you can play a song acoustically and people are engaged in it, you've done your job as an artist. Mm-hmm. And like, then it's only you can only go up from there because with full band, everything's going to sound better. Everything's going to sound fuller. 
But if you can do it acoustically and draw people in, be like, man, now I had an emotional connection to that. You've done your job. I see where you're going. I'm ex- what? I'm excited. I'm, I'm not completely lost on this path. I kind of have some sort of way. Yeah. Well, I remember a year ago talking to you and you're like, I have no idea what that is. I have no idea what you're talking about. Look you, at you learn as you go. You learn Look as you go. Wow. Good for you. I'm excited. Top of the country is going to be fun. Um, are you excited to play a festival? That's not a contest too. Like you're playing Sunfest. That's kind of fun. That's and my time slot is wicked. And the day at the, the day I was put for the bill, it was like, Oh man, like Lainey Wilson, uh, oh, nice. Cameron Marlowe. I was like, these are some big names that people spend hundreds of dollars to pay for tickets. That's going to be and a like, sick show. My mom the other day was like, yeah, we just bought our tickets for Sunfest and they're like 144 bucks each for the day pass. And I was like, man, like people are coming to watch me play, especially like being a Vancouver local. And obviously with um, Rock and River sadly not doing it this year, yeah. um, Sunfest is going to be the biggest festival in BC. There's Yeah, the, there's been a lot of festivals just kind of folding lately. It's so sad. And it's... Rock and River was a staple for a long time. That was that was a goal show. I had kind of like a vision board of what I wanted to play um, this summer, and like Sunfest was one of them. Rock and River was one of them. Boots was one of them, but like Boots didn't happen. I was like, oh, like whatever. Like if you're gonna get a thousand no's before you get a yes, and then um, Sunfest posted on their Instagram. They were like, hey, like do you guys know any local talent that wants to play? And like I threw up on my story in hopes that people would want to see me play. And like within. 10 minutes there was 100 comments of me being like you guys got to have mark play and then with you know someone local who can play <laughs> with yeah exactly within the hour like sunfest reached out and was like hey do you want to play like we'll send you the bill or we'll send you the contract right now and it was a cool moment because like it almost works out perfectly like sunfest is august 4th and uh my ep drops june 30th and so it's going to be a whole fresh new set uh of music that people haven't heard yet and I'm super excited for them to be like, not just know the words of one song, but know the words to seven, eight, nine kind of thing. Mm. God, just l- listening to you talk, you are a very busy man. Like you oh. don't stop between hockey, music. What do you do? Like, when do you turn off or when do you like, what do you do to wind down? Ah, uh, man, I, I love hanging with my family. Like my sisters, I'm so close with my sisters and like we, I have a niece now and she's awesome. So you know, when she's over, I can't just be playing the guitar because I don't want to hit her in the face with my the body of my guitar. And she's running now, so it's even worse. Like, so we have to cover every sharp object. So when, when I'm babysitting her, it's kind of a nice relaxing time off. Like, I'm not on my phone. I'm not, I'm just being in the moment. And, uh, but I mean, like, I still love to golf. I still love to work out. I still love to hang out with my friends. And so, like, I make time for the stuff I want to do. Like, that's the nice thing about music. If you don't feel like playing music that day, you just put the guitar in its case don't and do it. <laughs> throw it off the balcony for today. Oh. <laughs> Just yeet it off the balcony. Exactly. And like I have, I like most, most artists have like these thousands of dollars worth of guitars. And like, I kind of like just going on Craigslist and face at marketplace and finding 30, $40 guitars where I could just see what the sounds like. Mm. And if you find something like a perfect example is Bonnie Vare. Like he was in a cabin in the woods somewhere and he recorded arguably like a top 50 album streaming of all time with a $50 guitar and a mic. It's nuts. And so like it, it really, like people always say like, it's not the stick, it's the player. It's not the guitar, it's the player. Like, no, like sometimes like you can find cool sounding things and not so expensive like tools to have. Do you have like a, a guitar you treat yourself to eventually? I have, I have my eye on a guitar. So I have a Fender, uh, an acoustic uh, electric Fender. And like that one cost me about a thousand bucks. And like that one, that one travels with me to Germany. I keep it in the case, but I have my like 30, $40 guitars that I just beat the snot out just to kind of, and try weird tuning. I'm okay with breaking mm-hmm. strings on that one. Uh, but there is a guitar, like it's a nice Gretsch electric guitar. And like, that's, that's kind of like a nice treat I would give myself if, if I made like the top three or something like that. Ooh. Yeah. You heard it here. So <laughs> Get that let's hope let's hope I make the top three so I can go spend some money. <laughs> <laughs> That's maybe maybe your sisters will gift it to you because they they're just so proud of you. That'd be cool. Maybe I'll just like met, message Gretch or Gibson and be like, hey, 
I'm nobody, but can you give me free stuff? <laughs> I'm sure it'll work. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's funny. Um, so you've got, you're like, you're talking about like new music and you're excited about this new music. You have a, an EP coming. What's, what's the same about your new music? What's different about your new music? So after Hardy released his album, cause Hardy's a f- phenomenal songwriter and he went, he went like rock with it. And I thought that was so cool mm-hmm. because it was almost like, he was like, I'm doing my own thing. I'm not following all these country acts anymore. Like I'm doing my own thing. What do you mean? And so is not a fucking I, radio song? Exactly. <laughs> he he's getting airplay on on rock stations across like North America right now. Oh yeah. And so for him, like, I was in after Boots. I kind of w- I wanted to do something a little bit different, so I started. It's so the title track uh, of the EP and the title of the name is Cowboys Wear Sneakers Too. <laughs> That's so. I don't funny. I don't wear boots. I'm not. I'm you. not. You're Converse. <laughs> and exactly like I'm an I'm a athletic shoe nike kind of guy and like for me you see you see all these people wearing nikes but on stage they're wearing boots and like i'm never gonna change for anybody like i am who i am to the day i die and so i was like i want to do something different so like cowboys wear sneakers too has like a country like rock vibe to it and then i still have some like pop country songs and i have some super country songs and for the first like project i'm dropping i wanted to do just an absurd amount of like different types of genres in the country music scene where people could go, oh man, like he can kind of do each genre well. I wonder what he could do with just like sticking with like a straight country album or a straight pop country album. But it's, I get bored of playing the same type of music every day. And so I'm always trying to challenge myself, like how can I write something a little bit different? And so that's exactly what I did for this, for the CP. Fair. What's your writing process like? Like, does it start with like an idea, like a melody or like do you journal? Yeah, so I have I have a journal and I like every artist I use voice notes on the daily and like the weirdest things like you'll be doing something so random and then all of a sudden like an idea will pop in your head and you'll like, oh, that's kind of a cool melody. So like, yeah, I'd say I'd start with the melody and then I find what it would sound like on guitar mm-hmm. and then I just kind of build the lyrics from there. I usually hum a lot and just try to find like what would sound cool, what wouldn't. And then I take that humming recording and I play it over and over and over again. Then I just kind of fill in the words. Do you ever start with the words first? Yeah, all the time. Okay. It's it's never, for me, for me, there's never like, it's like playing hockey. There's no one way to score a goal unless you shoot the puck in the net. Um, It's like music. Like there's no one way of learning a song until you start blurting stuff out. Like 90% 90 of it's going to sound like absolute gibberish. (laughs) But if you get that 1% out, and it makes sense, the, the lyrics just follow. Especially if you if you have a story that you want to tell. That's probably the biggest thing. Like for me, like authenticity is what I what I preached the most. And so like when I write songs, they're about me personally. And like that was with Drink About Me, Drink About My Friends, like Girl Like You. And so when I wrote like this super country song that feels country to me, it's called Feels Country to Me. And um it's just about like, man, like I might not have grown up with a pair of boots on in the country on a farm, but like me drinking on a back row with my friends, like feels country to me. And that's the nice thing with country like music that. is that they don't, n- nobody judges you in country music because everyone's story is a little bit different. And like, if you're in a rock, in a rock band and you're singing folk music, they might go, Ooh, you might be in the wrong business. But with country, country can be almost anything now. You see a lot more Hmm. of like electronic. There's a lot of crossover. It's it's huge crossover now. And that's the one thing about country is that people always find a way to relate to it, which is cool. That's why it drives me nuts when people are like, I hate country. I'm like, well, you you probably hate parts of country, but there's like, you know, there's genre, like there's artists in the genre that you're going to like. Like I used to hate country music with a passion. Like, because growing up, it's all, all I knew was like, what my grandparents listened to and it was it all was like the very stereotypical stuff and yeah um it wasn't until i started working in radio at a country station <laughs> that i was like i need to find something to like about this genre or i'm gonna die um but i ended up falling in love with like certain like aspects of the genre and now obviously that's kind of what i <laughs> what i do is my, yeah it's my life now but like so anytime someone says they don't like country i'm like challenge accepted i will find something that you will like <laughs> Does that mean you? Hundred percent. Like, look at Shania. Shania was so country from the '90s to the 2000s, and now she's coming out with stuff that's like a crossover almost. Mm-hmm. 
And like, that's the queen of country music. You know what I mean? Like everyone's doing, and like, look at Morgan Wallen, like Morgan Wallen's dangerous double album was super country, like heavy, but now his new album, one thing at a time is a super crossover. That true. Do you hate the Oak Ridge boys? I don't really know much about the, the Oak Ridge boys. We were in the car yesterday driving to this thing. We we're going, this event we we're going to, and I put the prime country station on, on Sirius. And I was like, you're going to die when you listen to this shit. And he was, you didn't even fuss, but I was like, I've never listened to the Oak Ridge Boys more. And I feel like you, you were like, my grandparents listen to that. Yep. I mean, now that I've like been in the industry, I can appreciate the like, like the oldies and where it came from and, and where it fits into history. But it, it's, it's not my, it's not my go-to by any means. For everyone's everyone still has their preferences. That's the thing. Like some people love country pop. Some people love just straight country. Some people love the crossovers that Morgan Wallen's doing. And like, that's why I wanted to do so many different things and people would be like, Oh, like if I don't like this song, I know I'm going to like this song. Cause it's right in the wheelhouse. That's true. Also, it's like too early to define yourself. So why not just try everything? I'm still trying to find myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Relatable. <laughs> that's why I travel a lot. Yeah. That's why you can't decide if your tooth needs to be in or out. Well, that's, that's the thing too. And dentists are really expensive. Truth. And you're a liability as a hockey player. A hundred percent. Are we golfing before Easter or are we getting effed until May? Well, right now it's snowing. So I don't really think I'll be shooting well if I went and played golf. Can you play indoor golf anywhere? Do you play indoor golf anywhere near you or no? uh, We don't really have indoor golf. Like we have driving ranges and stuff like that. Um, But I mean, Vancouver, like usually in the summer, the weather's so nice. You never really need to be inside. I'm jonesing for summer. I need to go outside and teach you how to play golf. I know how to play golf. But like, I don't have the attention span for a full 18. Can you play golf with somebody who sucks at golf? You know what? Golf's not about how well you do. It's about the company. Okay, that's what my brother says too. But I, I, I'm not good company when I'm not good at something. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Nine drinks on the first nine holes changes that pretty quick. Well, yep. I just ask Jenna. Hey, PPJ? No. <laughs> I love it. Golf is a good summer thing. Anyways, I'm sad I brought that up again. I like the idea of golf, but I just, after nine holes, I'm like, okay. That's when you're just humming and you're ready to go on the next, no- like, back nine. Like, you just starting to, you're warmed up now. That's why when people, you make when up people all are your just shots. first getting into golf, executive courses are the best because it's only 12 holes. And so you're like, you get to six and you're like, oh, there's only six more holes to go? Like, even if you're doing brutal on the first 10 holes, you know there's only two more left to finish. You can go have a drink or something to eat at the clubhouse. and like. But it's it's always about the company. If you have good company with good friends, like that's kind of what drinking with my friends is about. Like It's just about the company. It's about the ride, not where you got to be. Fair enough. Get that on a t-shirt. I like that. Oh, I mean, I want to make a shirt that says Bud Light and it says, bitch, you don't like it, go home then. <laughs> what? So the acronym for Bud Light translates to bitch, you don't like it, go home then. <laughs> I, don't, I, I like it. I wish I didn't. I didn't need to know that. Information. <laughs> that's, that's something I could have gone my whole life without having access to. That's okay. No, no, because you're going to see, you're going to see somebody drinking a Bud Light who's in a really bad mood and you go, bitch, you don't like it, go home then. <laughs> well, now I am. There you go. I want that on a on a hat. Oh, I got I'm getting merch made up and like all my merch is so ironic <laughs> that it's uh it's just a big it's actually a big like, these are the sample hats that I got in and uh, it's just going to be a big patch with a cowboy hat that says cowboy hat on it. <laughs> and so that if you're wearing it somebody goes what kind of hat is that and they said it's a cowboy, cowboy hat. hat. <laughs> I like it. So, I just like it, everything needs to be fun. You only got one life and you got to have fun with it. Well, that seems like it's a great time to bring up that we're coming to the end of our <laughs> of our uh, time together. Um, what what do you have coming up soon? You, you have your EP coming at the end of June. Top of the country. Yeah, top of the country. Um, I have some local shows that I'm doing, and then I'm also trying to set up a EP release party for Cowboys vs Sneakers too, and that'll be like the first hometown show in Vancouver. Nice. And uh, I'm super excited about that one because. I know all my friends and family are going to be there, but I also know people throughout Vancouver who listen to my music are also going to show up. So it's going to be a party. Exactly. 
and wherever you guys saw it boots wherever i go i was always around for a good time that is very true you you ended up with like the weekend with like one of every wristband oh yeah i was like how i (laughs) i was told i couldn't go places and i was working if you if you can talk to people you can get in anywhere that is very true that is so funny i was jealous oh i also got in (laughs) trouble for that but hopefully boots forgets about it (laughs) and lets me play next year (laughs) <laughs> and then you're, you're getting all of them in again and i'm getting everyone out anyway so yeah. perfect <laughs> yeah and on that note well mark thanks so much for joining us uh it's a pleasure uh we're looking forward to some new music from you and uh, seeing what happens with top of the country oh thanks guys i appreciate the time you bet thanks for listening to another episode of on the porch with front porch music we're so lucky to be able to chat with artists and make episodes like this one if you like the podcast remember to rate and review us and subscribe so you don't miss an episode It's the easiest way to support the show. Remember to check out frontporchmusic.ca to keep up with new music releases, exclusive artist interviews, and more. We'll catch you again on The Porch in a couple of weeks. On The Porch is hosted by Logan Miller and Jenna Weiser, and produced and edited by Jason Saunders. That's me. Our theme song was written, produced, and performed by Owen Rigman.